Hi everybody, Jo here again. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you're enjoying this extravaganza and all the wonderful videos and tutorials that we're putting on. Um, I hope you'll carry on and join us all weekend. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. You see, the voice has started already. <laughs> anyway, as I say, I hope you're enjoying it. And um, there's been an awful lot of work gone into this um, few days. So um, please sit back, enjoy it all and um, appreciate all the, the time and, and the effort that we've put in. Um, today, I thought I'd pop in and share something a little bit different with you. And what I'm going to create is I've got this beautiful MDF stand here. Now, obviously, I've got it flat, but it does stand up. And what I thought I'd do is show you how I've created this side. And what we're actually going to do is I'm going to create the back because it's double sided. And I just thought it's nice to show you something a little bit different. And all I've done to start off with, I'm going to stand that where I can see it. I've used my beautiful Dreamscape papers. And the, this is just an MDF shape and you can get all sorts of different shapes. And what I've done with this one, take the base off. I've just covered the surround with a little bit of black gesso to start off with. Just be mindful, try and not get a lot of gesso on here or on here because you want those little pegs to fit back in those holes. So a little tip, if you do get um, gesso or paint and you find the peg won't go in the hole, just use an emery board and that works a treat. So I'm going to stand that over there and all I've done to start off with is, as I say, put the black gesso on. You could use white. Um, I just prefer black. It's a little bit like framing. I love putting things on black card. It makes them pop, doesn't it? The hardest job for me was looking through these papers for which one to use. And look at this. I save every little scrap. Do you? I'm sure you do. I'm sure you like me. And these papers, you know, I did a workshop using these papers. I've used them for lots of other projects. And look, I've still got a lot. And this is how bad I am. I even saved these off cuts. I mean, that would make a beautiful bookmark. Cut that there. Yeah, in fact, I might even do that with those two because I've got some spare covers left. So all I've done is put this on my paper look pencil line round and I've cut it out I thought you don't want to see me do that and I've gone straight across the bottom because we don't need to cover these little tabs do we so I'm going to pop that back in there so as I say this is the dreamscape papers and we'll file those on the floor because today I definitely haven't got much room on my desk and what we'll do we'll start by stamping this up and this is just the way I approach these sorts of projects. They're great fun to do. If you've never tried one, oh, I hope you will. And um, what I would do first is I've chosen my focal point and it's the Woodland Sprite. Now I must admit the one thing I need to remember is because I turn my work on the side to stamp her, I need to make sure I've got this the right way. Now let me have a look. Yes, I'm going for this colour because I want to stamp my bluebell. So I want to think of sort of keeping the blue and the purpley colours. So for me, the green wouldn't really go. So I'm going to use my black, my Nocturne. And as always, I'm making sure I pop that out of the way. I don't want to put my block on top because before now I've had ink on here and put it on my finished piece. It is amazing how we learn, isn't it? I nearly said learn from our mistakes and believe you me, I seem to have made plenty of those. But again, that, that's how we learn and that's how we come to get into these. Um, you know, it's like the little hints and tips I give. The only reason I have so many is because I'm lucky that I've taught so many workshops and I've met so many lovely crafters. And through doing tutorials like this, it makes me think of ways to do things and, and reasons. I, I like to explain why I do things. So that if it fits in with you, you can do the same. If you have a better technique, you know, you share it with us. It's lovely that we can all share with each other. 
so she's a, a good stamp this she's a big stamp so um i'm just i don't want to use my stamping platform i want to see if i can use her as she is so i'm making sure i've got lots of lovely ink on there and i'm going to put her i think i'm just going to offset her with this one and put her there Now again, we have the lovely Bella. You could maybe add her. I'm just going to have the Woodland Sprite for mine. Now again, this paper takes ink really well. But it, like I say, she's quite a, a sizable stamp. So for me, I just want to let that VersaFine Claire ink soak in. So I'm giving her a good old pressing, especially on her body there where she's that silhouette. Right, let's have a look. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, I'm happy with that. She looks lovely there. So we'll put that to one side. And I'm going to bring in, I want to try and bring some sort of layers to this. So I'm going to bring in my garden poppy next. And I'm going to, I've got a couple of colours of Versafine, Claire. And I'm going to bring in Warm Breeze. I think a project like this, it's lovely to look at your colours of ink that you've got and maybe look for colours that you don't use very often. But I'm thinking the warm breeze look, this colour here in this backing paper, I think will pick it up really well. So I just want a couple of poppies that I'm going to stamp and these are going to be right in my, in my background. Perspective wise, I want these sort of in the distance. And again, I'm just turning my work to the side just because for me, I find it easier that way. And we'll have one. And again, remember that thing, they're not soldiers in a row, so we don't want them the same height. They're not standing to attention, the wildflowers. So let's just alter the height and alter the angle. But also I'm thinking of framing my design. So that was the warm breeze beautiful color that now again i'm just being mindful give my stamp a quick clean with a wet cloth and then with my inky binky just so that when i take my stamp off my block i don't get ink on my fingers so we'll come in next with our english bluebell and this is beautiful and perfect for spring extravaganza i mean springtime when the bluebells come up oh beautiful and the hair bells and the white bells, oh, absolutely gorgeous. So again, to add some depth, we'll stamp these first in paradise. And this is a beautiful, bright blue look. So again, oh, look at that colour. I must admit, I don't use this colour very much. I need to start using it more. Now let me think, let's put one here. And don't be afraid when you're stamping something like a meadow like this, don't be afraid to stamp one stamp on top of the other. Because again, when you look at garden flowers, when you look at flowers in the wild, they're not all stood separate from each other. You do have one in front of the other and that will just help with your perspective and depth. And it will just look more natural and less contrived. So I think we'll have a little one down there. And then one there. And I think just one popping off the page there. There we go. I think we'll leave that in the blue. I can always come back and add another one if I want. Now I'm going to stamp some now in black just to bring them to the foreground. But again, I'm cleaning my stamp because I don't want to put any blue ink on my black ink pad. It's always good to get in these habits. So let's have a look, black, where should we have? Now I'm thinking if we put one here, look. And then just, one just coming off the edge there. So that's that side. What do you think? That looks nice, doesn't it? Because that looks like that's come from there. And then we've certainly got a space here and maybe here. I think that would. And again, don't be in too much of a rush to do this. So let's stamp this one here and let's angle that that way. So if we look at the design again, I like that. 
and we definitely need some of that black here and you see how the black comes into the foreground but also it matches the stamping here so we definitely want something here and as I say if you're not sure about all this just use your acetate and place your acetate over the top and I'm just going to add the tiniest bit of the touch of one there. Yes, I like that. I think that's just a, a lovely, without, I don't want to fill every single space. It's nice to have some space and let your eye rest. So we'll give that stamp a wipe. We're going to do all our stamping first. So what I want now is just some interest at the top. And the bellflower vine is beautiful for this. Now on my original side, I've got it here, but I'm thinking there's a space here. I think it will look better at that side. And again, I'm just going to stamp this in black. Beautiful, delicate stamp this, I must admit. And I think we'll just... And I think I just like it at one side. Oh, there we go, really pretty look. And again, we've got this lovely, in the background here, that lovely shape. So, yeah. Give that a wipe. And then all my stamps are clean, you see. So I'm happy with that. So let's just give this a bit of a blot. And it's just building up that background. So again, if you're somebody who's new, and we have got a lot of lovely new followers, um, these papers are fabulous if you're not sure about making your own backgrounds. But to be honest, even if you're somebody who's happy making your backgrounds, for something like this, they're just perfect to use. So we've got that lovely design, but if we bring the finished one in, always looks better, I think, to add, add the moon. And this always amazes me how by adding the moon, we can add just white and brighten the whole thing up. So we'll get our moon mask, which again is here with my little dab of Posca on it. So hopefully I won't lose it. Now, to put a colour round the moon, I've gone for the beautiful violet chalk just to bring in those sorts of blues. I thought if I go for blue, there'll be too much blue, but we've got a little bit of purple look in the background and purple and blue blend so well together. So I'm just going to turn this on the side and I'm just going to, again, spend your time. It's not a rush, this, and have a look. I mean, you could just have her head if you wanted, but I think it'd be nice just to, her body just sort of fits in there. So again lid off it's amazing how you get used to opening your ink pads with one hand dab in the ink and I'm going to take some off on the lid and even though I've taken some off look I'm going to come onto my mask first look at all that color very juicy and let's just flick now the reason I blotted and make sure I always blot my ink is this ink this black here I want to make sure it's dry if it wasn't perfectly dry now it would smudge and again, just move your hand round, holding your moon mask. Pick some of that ink up from the middle. Let's just add a little bit more. Just have a look. And that is just enough for me. Don't want it to be too much. I think that's just the right amount. And again, I'm just going to give my moon mask a wipe. Because if I don't again, I'll get ink on my fingers and then ink on my work. Now, while we've got this out, I'm just going to blend some ink around the edge. So again, into the lid. I'm going to start at the bottom. Now, I just need a piece of kitchen roll, which I seem to have lost. But anyway, this piece will be fine. So we'll start on the bottom. Look, I just don't want to put my inky fingers on her. And I want to add some at the base, look. And what this is going to do is frame my design, but also it gives that at the bottom, almost like that lovely misty feel. And again, this is another reason that you need all that ink to be dry so you won't smudge it. 
I'm going to go all the way around. Again, always tapping in my lid. Pick some of this up off the mat. And then right to this end. And let's have a look at that. That's lovely, isn't it? You see how it just frames the whole design and it ties in that purple. We can pop that away and we'll just, with a damp cloth, wipe this and dry it. Again, just keeping those good habits and then we keep our area clean. I constantly get people asking how to keep an area clean and it is just try and get in the habit of cleaning up all the time, having your kitchen roll there to put your hand on. So what we'll do now is we'll just look at adding some little finishing details. So the flowers up here, let's add some colour. And for that, we're just going to use some normal pencils. So these are just normal colouring pencils. And I've got a green, just to add a little bit of green to the leaf there. And a blue. And again, it is coloured paper underneath. But I just want to take away, they almost look too see-through, don't they? So, just going to add, and again, you can colour with whatever medium you like. I just thought for this, I didn't really want to introduce any water to this design. So, I thought just colouring pencils would be fine. Now, I've added blue. Turn it around so you can see. But I've got a, again, lean on my paper, I've got a darker blue just to add at the top look. Again, then, if you look at the stamps, Trace is giving you lines where you need the darker colour, where the shading is. And then what I do want is I've got a blue gel pen. And just on these, oh, that's pretty. Just there we'll add that little bit of highlight. So that's those. I'm happy with those. Now, when it comes to our fairy, our woodland sprite, now, just with my white pastel pencil, I'm going to give her some little bit of highlights, just a little bit of detail. And again, I always say this, it's up to you. I'm going to add just her chin there, a little bit on her arm. You can use a white gel pen for this. You can leave her without, you don't have to add highlights. For me, I just think it helps give her a little bit of shape and just for me, brings her to life more. But again, it's totally up to you how you... And again, I'm smudging it with my finger just because it's my chalk pastel pencil and that will fix it. And also, it just, for me, gives a better effect. And then also, I'm going to add a few little highlights to this beautiful flower that she's on and what she does need or oh, while I've got my pencil I'm just going to add round my moon and again the reason I like doing this with the pastel pencil and then smudging it is it just adds to that sort of hazy but also you know what if your blending isn't 100% and you're not happy with it, now I shouldn't tell you this, but it's a lovely little trick way of just that edge, almost smudging that edge a little bit. But I think it just adds to that lovely hazy. And you can just add a couple of extra look. Now we've also got these orbs here, so I could add a little bit more to those and highlight those. Just helps with that all sort of ethereal feel. Now, while I've got my blue gel pen, because she's obviously the woodland sprite and she's on this beautiful blue bow, I'm just going to use the blue and just add some gorgeous highlights here. And I think the blue will just go, we'll add a little bit to her here. Again, I just think that all adds. See how, how pretty that is. Now what I'm going to do is just add 
instead of using my white gel pen, I think for this I'm going to go with the blue. Now again, you will take a lot longer than me, but I think that on the black, I think the black and the blue is really pretty. So, and again, as I say, you will take a little bit longer. Now again, this highlight is going to catch from the moon here. And then I'm going to add some blue highlights with my gel pen. And I just want the two. I just don't, I'm not going to do it on every single one. Just a little bit on here. As I say, not every single. And we'll just, just on this side. Obviously the moonlight's here, so it won't catch the ones on this side. So I'm just going to add some little, yeah. And on my poppy, I'm thinking, let's use the silver. Now, again, it might be um, you've got different gel pens. It might be you've got different ways of adding sparkle. Must admit, these Signal gel pens are brilliant. And <laughs> I just order a different colour every time I put an order in. I've got quite a collection. I have to keep them away from Elliot, though. He really likes gel pens. And these, these are Grandma's special ones for crafting. And what I'm thinking on the blue, blue bells, let's add purple bit of sparkle. I think that'll look nice. So we've got the blue sparkle on the black, the ones we've stamped in black. And let's just add a little bit of purple. And as I say, I don't want to over overdo it. I'm not going to add it to all of them. Let's have a look. How are we? If I... You know what I'm like with my camera work. How's that looking? It's looking quite pretty, isn't it? And again, we've got that lovely depth. Yeah, I like that. Amazing how quickly it builds up. But again, that's your backing papers for you. So just take your time and have a look. Just see if there's anywhere you want any extra. And I think we need a little bit more, just a little bit more pizzazz here. So we're going to come in with our pan pastel and this is the white fine pearl medium. Quite a mouthful that, not easy to say. I've got this lovely applicator and I'm just going to add. So this, you can add it in here, look, into the moon. And again, I'm just going to use my fingers just to smudge it a little. But also, if you want to almost add some of that mist look, like we've done before and just blend it. We'll add a little bit down here, look. So it's just coming across a little bit up here. Oh yeah, that just adds to it, doesn't it? Really pretty and because we've smudged it, that will just fix it because I've not used a great deal. Now, if I did use a lot more, what I could do is just use a spray fixative. But I'm being mindful, I just want to wipe my finger. Now the last little thing I want to add is some Posca to this and some glitter. So what we'll do is, when I'm adding my glitter, what I tend to do, I'm just going to add a little bit. I don't want to add too much. I tend to add my lovely Stickles glitter and then I have an empty Wink of Stella pen. And I just tend to move it round with that. Two things, it helps it dry quicker, but also you find you're painting with it so you can be more definite exactly where you want it. Quite often I put it on my mat as well and just pick it up off my mat. I'll just have a little bit rounder here. Yeah, and let's add some Posca. Now again, Poscas I do get one thing that people ask a lot of is the Poscas. For me, always give it a good shake. And then it's a pump action. So just give it a couple of pumps. Now again, you can tap it if you want. Let's just cover, cover our fairy up. You can tap it if you want, but I find just a lovely flick in motion. Just to finish the design. So again, give it a good shake, pump it up, 
and then I'm just going to by hand add a few here where I want a few more. There we go. But do remember where you've tested it there, give that a good wipe with your wet cloth and over here where we've got it. But again, whatever system works for you, if tapping it with a ruler helps you do that, because at the end of the day, it's all about your design, isn't it? And, and how things work for you. And that's why we come in with these videos, to give you hints and tips, and you just work with whatever is best for you. Now, I'm just going to heat this, because I really want that Posca and that gel to dry before we add it to our project. At home, if I was doing this and it wasn't live, I would go off and make myself another brew. Get myself another cheeky biscuit and let it dry naturally. But for purposes of this, I just want it as dry as possible. And what we're going to do now is glue it to the MDF. So for this, I've got the wonderful Lavinia Bippity Boppity Glue. And what's good about this is you've got a lovely fine applicator look. So you can either put the glue on the paper, but mine's obviously still a bit wet. So I'm thinking I'll put it on the MDF. But the best tip I can give you for me is use your finger and rub it in. And also make sure you pop it to all the edges look. There's nothing worse than putting paper on MDF and finding it um, pulling up at the edges. So we'll make it nice and flat. And also, you know, a bit like wallpaper when you get air bubbles. See, I haven't got quite enough there. If there's an area where you haven't got glue, the paper won't stick. And that's when you'll get, like I say, like, you know, when you're doing wallpaper in. So we want to make sure we've got it. And this dries clear, so don't worry. I just need some there. Uh... Right, I think we've got all the way around the edge. So again, just wipe my fingers. And then what you're going to do is take this and just line it up. Now you have got wiggle time, so we'll give it a bit of a wiggle. Let's just have a look. And the other thing, with painting this black, you have got a bit of extra wiggle. Right, so. Now again, be mindful. Let's get a clean piece of kitchen towel. And be mindful, when you're pressing it down, use your kitchen towel. Because again, if you put your hand on and smudge it, or if you've got dirty fingers. Now, as I say, mine isn't quite, the white Posca isn't quite dry, but you would leave it till the Posca was completely dry. Now, if when you look around your paper, say you haven't quite cut it and it was overhanging, must admit, I think I've done quite a good job there. But again, just get yourself your your little emery board or some fine sanding paper and just go round and sand, do an away sort of motion and just sand the edges. Because obviously you would see it from the back. So there I've got a little bit, look, it's just overlapping. So again, just going to sand that down. Yeah, and that's lovely and smooth now. And just to finish off those edges, so again, as an extra little. So if you look, I'm just putting some, and this is just, um, this one's silver. So this is my silver gilding wax. And I'm just going to add a little bit of gilding wax around the edge. Now, again, I would wait till it was completely dry. But obviously for these purposes, I'll, I'll do it now. And we're just going to catch the edge. And 
that will just help if your paper doesn't go right to the edge but also where you've got that lovely black look the silver will look lovely on the top so we can put it right round the edge and look at that lovely edge we get here look you, there's no way you can tell you've got two pieces of, of card there and that silver will just help to add that extra frame so again I've put some gilding wax on my lid look I get it everywhere but dab it off the lid I don't like to keep taking it straight out of the pot in case I get too much so I'd rather keep picking it up from the lid and I can keep adding it remember that thing we can always add it but we can't take it away we don't want to put too much on and spoil it and what I will do is just on the base here actually that that's on my finger let's just add that to this base that will just finish that off a treat something else I want to add to the base anyway so let's just right lid on she says this is one of those screw jars there we go you need to take your time if you try and rush putting the lid on now do bear with me because I definitely do need to just give my hand a bit of a wipe there Now I've done the same design back and front just so I could show you how I created it. But again, you could do a different design. You could even um, stamp a verse, say on the reverse, and give it as a gift to somebody instead of a card. And let's face it, it doesn't really take any longer than a card. Or maybe do a matching card. Right, so let's see if this will fit in here. Lovely. So what I'm going to do check it fits and put a little bit of glue just on the edges here and again like I say this dries clear so I don't need to worry just check I've got it on those edges and then we'll pop this in here and glue it in and then just wipe either side there we go so that's the side we've just done and if we turn it round that's the side I did earlier now I see now I'm torn I don't know which I prefer Ooh. But what I was thinking was, if we use this side, so this is going to stand up like that, but obviously you can't really see that if I do that. But what I'm thinking is I want to add some, I've got some moss. So what I'm thinking is, if I get, so I've got some of this dried moss. And also, I've got a gorgeous little mushroom here. So, I'm just going to see. So, do excuse me, because now I am playing. And what I just want to see is if. Just put a little bit of glue my 3d glue gel just put that lovely mushroom right let's check if i've got enough going to add a bit more to the base I think I need plenty on here I think it's going to be easier to do it this way so it's not going to be very good for you to see I'm afraid this is the bit I love though the finishing bits I don't know about you but this is my favourite bit so I'm just going to add the glue there 
and as I say this is a 3D glue gel you can use whichever glue you prefer and like I say I'm just going to take some of this moss now you can use any I'm sure you've got lots of different sort of things I'm just thinking it'll add to the texture at the base look now obviously I couldn't do this before because I wanted to pop the other side on I don't want to overdo it I'm still happy that you can see the black but I think just put another little bit there have got some light so I'm thinking I could add some lights to that as well right there we go what do you think I know it's difficult because you can't really see and what I have got I'm actually going to stand this up and I've got a lovely little lamp which I'm going to stand in front of this and I'm going to stand that up and as I say it's not very easy for you to see so let me just move this moss out of the way and I think the best thing I can do is if I just stand up and just bring it a little bit closer so you can sort of get an idea and I'll, I'll, I'll take a picture of it actually stood up to give you a better I just think that's so pretty and as I say double sided now if you do want to add a sentiment you could you could pop a sentiment on there couldn't you or like i say let me just see if i can turn it over without my mushroom falling off and there's the back so again when this side's dry i'm going to add some moss to that side as well so i shall put that there so i'm hoping you enjoyed that and thank you for spending a little bit of time with me now you take care enjoy the rest of your day and your weekend much love and hugs from me. Bye for now.